Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. In honor of Women's History Month, we're conducting a series of podcast sessions with our individual NITNs to discuss their experiences and their opinions on this topic. I'm Michelle Tucker, your host for the session. Today, I'm so pleased to welcome Anjali Vich, who is the VP of Learning Delivery. Hi, Anjali. So glad you could join us. Hi, Michelle. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. Thank you so much for being here. So we'll get right into our questions. I'm really looking forward to hearing about what you have to say on this topic. Oh, pressure. <laughs> no pressure. Always uh, always insightful, right? Uh, we'd love to hear what our colleagues have to say. Um, so if we could start by, can you tell us, uh, how did you arrive at the position you're in today? Kind of taking us briefly through your career journey and, and growth. So I got interested in learning the delivery or development way back in 2003. Um, yeah, I mean, that's like many, many years back, but uh, one of my managers decided that I could do some kind of uh, stand-up training kind of a thing, not really a training, but like more like a, you know, speech. Uh, and that's when the bug hit me. Um, and so I, I, started, I started off as a trainer, I did a lot of trainings for many, many years, started off as a sales trainer, went into voice and accent, then went into leadership. And that's, I think, probably where I found a little kind of a sweet spot. And I said, maybe this is what I want to do. Uh, I used to work for a company known as Evolve, which NIT later on uh, bought um, in 1919, sorry, 2009. Uh, and I came over to NIT. Uh, at that point, I actually uh, shifted uh, uh, my role. I moved away from learning delivery, which I was managing at Evolve, and moved to joining the pre-sales team for the India business here in NIT. Uh, 2014, and I, I, I don't know how I remember all these days, but 2014 <laughs> was our first customer who wanted to work with an IIT to de uh, deliver leadership and professional skills programs for them. I think I was one person that everyone thought I could do that because it came from that background. And that's how I, I got into how where I am today. So I was at that point of time a deputy general manager. Uh, I started working with one customer, which is Rio Tinto. And from then on till now, which has been like eight years, I've seen growth and come to the place where I am now leading the entire portfolio, the vertical for leadership and professional development for NIT. That's excellent. I mean, that gives such inspiration to others, uh, you know, to have a, a, a journey like that. And, uh, and the journey is not over. I mean, the journey can still take you many, many places. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, during, during your career, how have you seen the work environment change for women? So this is an interesting one for me. The organization that I came from, which was Evolve, was predominantly a woman-oriented organization, though our CEO was a man. But the rest of the organization was 85% women. Oh, wow. So, <laughs> yes. So for a very long time, because I think we were all in training and we were doing training delivery. Uh, so I think maybe that was the reason why we all were women. We did start working with other organizations where we had some men <clears throat> joining us later on. So it kind of moved away from 85 to maybe like a 60, 40 kind of a thing. But it was very heavily women driven kind of an organization. The, C the CEO was a woman and then you know, the, even the, most of the leadership actually, except for the CEO, was were women. Um, awesome. So <clears throat> I think I've seen that. And then I came to NIT, which was very progressive that way. Uh, I have very honestly, an, uh, uh, I mean, I've never felt that I'm a woman in an IIT, if I can, I don't know if that sounds a good thing. No, that, that makes yeah, sense. It, 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 there is, I don't see a, a, a discrimination or any kind of a difference in how men are and women are treated, at least uh, I haven't seen it in all these years. So I think, uh, but overall, I think uh, as an organization and in the country that we are in, in the environment or the corporate world, I think the environments are changing. They're becoming more uh, open to having women at leadership. I think people, have, there's more voice to women. Uh, if you look at NIT's leadership, a lot of women are there. Um, so I think uh, it's, we have a seat at the table. We have a voice at the table. Um, so I think it's 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 really good. I don't know if it was that the case in a few years back, but now it surely is getting there. But again, having said that, I think, think there's still way more to go. Great. Um, it's great to hear that you've you've had some really positive experiences uh, yes. in the industry, and especially how impressive to to be able to work in a a, a more 
a woman prominent, uh, you know, company originally too. Yeah. yeah. Um, have you had female mentors that broke barriers, kind of leaving a path for you? Yeah. So I, again, um, I could kind of go back again uh, to the same place. My manager uh, was a female, uh, was a woman, uh, and she uh, was the CEO of the organization. Um, she actually became my mentor when I took out my ma- first managerial role, actually. Uh, and she guided me. She uh, walked me through. She held my hand. She scolded me. Um, but I think she kind of helped us grow as individuals, helped us learn how to be strong, uh, how to have a voice and not really be shy about what we want or what we want to say. Uh, in fact, a few people that I still uh, I'm in touch with from that that organization and even at NIIT who are still people who are still working with NIIT. And uh, actually a lot of us moved to NIT and she also moved to NIT with us. Um, so for a large uh, uh, place, you know, she kind of was our flag bearer because she was the C- uh, CEO. Uh, then she came to NIT. She was heading consulting for a long time. And then, you know, she left. But now she's working as a CEO for NASCOM, uh, which is a huge organization in NIT, uh, India. So I think uh, she kind of helped us be... Um, like I said, be more strong, be more, have a voice, uh, not really um, be shy about what you want to share or what you want to say or uh, always being upfront, always being positive, always being, uh, you know, um, collaborative. Uh, a lot of things that uh, broke barriers from her, from her perspective. Yeah, sounds like a really inspiring uh, mentor to have as the one that was very influential. Very inspiring. And kind of on a related note, but more from a um, diversity in teams and mentors question, uh, Mm -hmm. are there any kind of lessons you've learned along your career journey that you would share with those um, maybe in a more junior role, male or female, kind of on the impact and benefits of having either mentors, collaborators, or teams that are gender diverse? So could you have, you know, the importance of, you know, female uh, having a male mentor or, or, or vice versa, or um, just teams that are very gender diverse? What would the, pro, the, the, the pros and cons, uh, you know, of those, of those be? I think it's, it's actually good to have, you know, gender diverse teams, um, also gender diverse mentors or managers or people that you work with, because it opens up uh, doors from both the sides because Mm -hmm. for men it becomes a learning experience on how to deal with uh, women and from women I mean the same thing vice versa for women to how to deal with men Uh, coming from the society that I belong to uh, that's a little challenge because you know we are a patriarchal society Uh, and I think that also having an organ working for an organization which lets you be you I think that actually helps a lot so I think blurring that whole lines uh, and there are other things that you can learn. I mean, uh, I have known men who are, who are very emotional, uh, uh, right. like what, you know, you hear that, you know, women are more emotional, men are less, so, which is not true. Men are very emotional, too. Um, I've had women who are very tough, like my mentor. Um, yeah. Uh, so I have seen both sides of the world and I've seen when you have teams which are uh, gender diverse, you become you learn things, you become more sensitive, you become more empathetic, you become more uh, open, you become you kind of have that what we call as more of learning from each other. So you can actually learn a lot of skills which are, as people would say, are more characteristics to male or more characteristics towards females. But if you actually have that uh, joint or you have a team which is actually gender diverse, you can really learn a lot from each other. There are a lot of skills that men can learn, and there are a lot of skills that women can learn from each other. So I think it helps in cross-pollination, it helps in learning, and it helps in growing. Absolutely. Uh, It's diversity in general, any kind of diversity, it it makes us better. Yeah. Um, what can others do, uh, you know, other others that are not that are not women um, to best support and kind of advocate for women and for gender equality? Like, can you think of examples in your own career where you were like, oh, wow, I want to encourage that more of that and lift it up for the future? 
So I had a manager. I mean, I had my, my uh, one of our, one of the managers that I work with. Uh, I think the first thing that I learned of or what I saw was giving a seat at the table, right? Uh, yeah. And so we because a we were obviously a women centric organization, but we also had men. Um, and he kind of showed us through various actions and uh, decisions that he made that we were all equal. Uh, yeah. you know, there, there was no, I mean, even if there was diversity, it kind of did not come through nine, either of the actions or the decisions. It was not about who, for example, you know, we used to have this terrace where we could go uh, go and, uh, you know, have a cup of coffee, have conversations and all of that. Uh, it was, again, you know, anyone could go there. Yeah. yeah. It was not about men could go there or women could go there. It was, it, it, we were never looked upon like, you know, uh, if there were women who were drinking, for example, or they were, uh, you know, uh, any other any other activity like that, which is usually scorned by men about, you know, women doing. Um, I We never saw that. We never saw that late night parties or going out and, you know, being independent. We were all encouraged to be who we were. I think that kind of helps a lot coming from a man. Um, I, another thing that comes is, uh, which comes to my mind, I had another manager later on in NIT actually, who always encouraged your voice. Yeah. And so when he saw, when you were in meeting and you, he would see that, you know, it's getting dominated by, let's say, some senior folks in the organization and you're just quietly sitting there, he would always encourage you. He'll always ask you for your perspective. will always give you a voice. Uh, I think that was another one. Third was, another example was, you know, when you could walk in without feeling the fear or being actually just open about things. I remember we we started this uh, training known as Prevention of Sexual Harassment in NIT many years back. And, you know, there were obviously it was a very serious topic. But, uh, you know, having conversations about what it meant, what would it do to people, how would people respond, and also taking it to another level of saying it's not only about men being the per- perpetrators for women, it could be also the other way around. Yeah. Uh, because sexual harassment can happen the other way around too. So having those conversations and letting it be becoming normal, I think there are lots of examples people that people can take a lot of learning from that. Oh, I think but those are having great. An open mindset. Sorry? Oh, I think those are great. Sorry, but uh, please, please continue. No, I was just saying, I mean, these are some great examples where you, you see equality. You, I mean, that's what you want. I mean, you want equality, you want equity. But again, having said all of this, giving you all of this did not mean that they lost the sensitivity of the fact that you were a woman. So the fact that, you know, you have children at home, you have a family to take care of, or you have other responsibility doesn't did not mean that they became less empathetic. So when they treated you with equality did not mean that they would forget the fact that there are certain things that you need to be doing because, for example, you know, you could need a maternity leave or you could have children who are sick at home or, you know, other things that you need uh, to do. uh, And having that sensitivity along with it. So on, on one side, the flexibility and the openness to accept you for who you are. At the same time, having the empathy and the understanding of what your what your challenges might be. Yeah, that's a really salient point. It's like, uh, on one hand, it's so important to treat people uh, equally. And on the other hand, uh, we do have different needs. I mean, in, yeah. on an individual basis, we have different needs. And then um, in, in general, uh, the, the genders often have different different needs. So uh, that's such a it's such an important point to make, too. Uh, who is a woman who inspires you personally or professionally uh, and why? I would not say a woman. Uh, I think most women inspire me. Uh, yeah. I look I look at some of my friends. I have a friend who is managing single-handedly two adult sons. Uh, she inspires me when I see the heart, you know, the, the light, what she needs to do for that. Um, I have... Uh, uh, women who manage households and then manage work. I think that inspires me. Uh, I'm any woman who manages both of these roles, you know, managing the house as well as the work, with all the uh, you know challenges that we come with. I think all of them are inspirational because uh, I'm sorry, uh, Michelle. I'm going to do this again if you don't mind. 
Oh, no, no problem at all. I think your answer is beautiful, by the way, but um, I, I'll, I, I'll ask it. I'll ask it again and we'll we'll start over. So, um, <laughs> sure. Who is a woman who inspires you personally or professionally? And if so, why? So I, I'm actually inspired by all women, to be honest. Uh, it's not a woman. Um, and I, and that the reason behind that is because I see hardships and I see challenges that women have to face. So women who balance their car- careers with their households or their families, I mean, they're all inspirational, you know, single-handedly managing kids, managing work, managing the expectations at home, managing the expectations at work, uh, yeah. and then taking care of themselves too. I mean, I, there are some women in NIT who take such gr- great care of themselves. So, you know, actually juggling all of this together, house, family, work, yourself, and then you have, I, mean, I don't know about internationally, but in India, we have these huge families, you know, which are, we have these huge extended families and managing their expectations. And they all do it so beautifully and with a smile on their face and they're doing great. The things that we need to do to manage, um, I think it's admirable. Watching women single-handedly managing households and work, Oof, I, I wonder how to do it. It's amazing. And, and you brought up a, a really good point, too, um, especially in, in India. It's very common to take care of the extended family. Yeah. And it's, that's a beautiful thing. But it, it is a lot. Um, it's a labor of love, of course. But it's so inspiring to, to look at that. And self. And you mentioned ca- taking care of yourself, too. How important is that as well? You and know. then not compromising on I, any of it. Yeah. You know, just yeah. giving your best at everything that you're doing. You you want to excel. You're excelling at your career. You're doing a great job at home. Uh, you know, you're doing a great job of taking care of yourself, your families. That takes a lot of courage, a lot of resilience, a lot of grit just to be able to do all of that. So I think that that by itself is inspirational. I see a lot of my friends who have who have to do this, and I salute them every day. Look at them doing it. I, I think that's a it's an amazing answer and uh, and and cheers to that. Kudos to all the women who who balance so many things. Uh, that's a that's a very inspiring answer. Thank you for sharing it. Uh, last question: As we move toward the future of work, some might say we're already in the future of work. Um, what can organizations like NIT do to continue to best support? positive change for women and gender equality? What kinds of programs, what kinds of initiatives, uh, attitudes? I think a lot of organizations are already on that way. Um, you know, uh, we are we have a mix of um, maturity when it comes to biases of diversity, mm-hmm. of inclusion. Uh, the, my favorite topic nowadays actually is DNI and e and belonging. So I think um, DNI, DIE and belonging. Sorry, uh, and I think uh, that's what we need to be doing because while we have certain sections of society which are there in terms of maturity, there are loads which are not. And this could be individual. This could be as an organization. This could be as a team. Uh, you know where you might have somebody who's still uh, har- harboring some unconscious biases, uh, people who still are uh, discriminating, people who are still not, who are not practicing inclusive behaviors, uh, people who still uh, scorn at when somebody, you know, for example, a woman comes and says, hey, I need to go home because I have two kids to take care of, or, <clears throat> you know, I need to I don't know, just do something that needs to be done. And it's like, you know, oh, she's a woman kind of a thing. Um, yeah. So I think what we I, what we need to be doing is, it, it's a journey. I can't say we can reach there quickly because yeah. it will take time. But essentially practice inclusion right from the top. Yep. Uh, if, all, if all leadership in the organization and not only in IIT, but all others also, but in IIT also, uh, if we started inclusion right at the beginning for all groups, not only for women, but just just being inclusive, I think we can really um, help the organization do better and also uh, support positive change and support gender equality. So more seats at the table, more voices, uh, more, um, you know, inclusive behavior, better practices. I think all of that can really help. 
Excellent. Yeah. Uh, diversity and inclusion is such an important topic and uh, we'll, we'll need to continue lifting it up in order to get where we want to go. So, thank you so much um, that we're just about out of time here. So I just want to thank you so much for your time and for being here. Um, and as well, of course, that of the listeners taking the time to, to listen to this session today. Um, I hope that you enjoyed it and hope that you enjoyed your, your time with us and discussing this important topic. I loved it. Thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to speak. Absolutely. We look forward to continuing to hear your voice uh, at NIT uh, as you continue on your uh, exciting career journey. So thank you for sharing your time. And uh, to the listeners, uh, we're looking forward to the next session. So uh, everyone out there, take care. And Anjali, you have a great rest of your day. Thank you so much, Michelle. Nice meeting you again. Thank you. A pleasure. Bye.